G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today, continuing a series doing individual videos on draft prospects ahead of the 2024 AFL Draft. If you want to see other players I've done in this series, click in the top right corner. I've got a playlist of uh, approximately about 15 names, which I'll continue to add to. So today, we're going to do Vic Country's Joe Berry. Now, Berry is a very good prospect, in my opinion, a player that I just feel a pretty decent sense of confidence he's going to be a good player at the next level. 180 centimeter small forward who in the modern game probably projects more as a high half forward which I think makes him very suited to modern AFL in the sense that he's not necessarily just a forward 50 crumbing goal sneak type of forward. He's very much a Dylan Moore-esque push up higher up the ground, accumulate the footy, help transition the footy and also happens to be dangerous around goals. A real quality high half forward is a bit of an underrated role in the modern game in my opinion. You see the impact that someone like Dylan Moore has at Hawthorne. So, you know, outside of the, you know, the key positions and midfield, a good quality high half forward is worth their weight in gold. And that's why I think Joe Berry will, in my opinion, become a good footballer because he's so well-rounded. He's quick. He's got great running capacity. He's agile. He's pretty good in the air for such a small player. He's dangerous around goals. He's good defensively. He's also showed some versatility. He can play close to goal. He can play in that high half forward role. He's had stints in the midfield. He can play on a wing and he can be a distributor of half back. So all of those factors for me combined to suggest that Joe Berry probably could be an impactful player as early as his first season, depending on which team he gets drafted to. So he's a very hardworking, smaller type of player, pushes up the ground, runs hard defensively, links up play really well, good foot skills. It's, he's actually quite dual sided, which is unusual for a left footer. When you watch him, even in preparation for this video, I'm watching videos and be like, wait, he is a left footer, right? But the amount of times that he willingly decides to kick on his right and then takes set shots with his left is quite impressive. For whatever reason, it seems less common for left footers to be genuinely dual sided. But like I said, for, for such a damaging up the ground player, he can be very dangerous around goals too. So for the Bush Rangers this season, he kicked 27 goals from 14 games and in the carnival led Vic Country with nine goals. He had a very strong carnival, like I said, nine goals, averaging 13 disposals, five and a half score involvements, and at times it was also thrown into the midfield. We'll get into, you know, what his overall strengths and weaknesses are and how much scope does he have to play as a midfielder at the next level. But he is a very well-performed junior, all Australian this year, named in the Coach Talent League Team of the Year as well, and the Murray Bush Rangers best and fairest. Usually I talk a little bit about how players tested at the combine. However, he didn't test at the combine. And, and to be honest, I actually can't find out why. So while we can't quantify, you know, how quick is he as an athlete against other prospects, the way he plays, we know what his strengths are. He does have good running capacity. He is quick. He is agile. So to summarize his strengths and weaknesses, you got First of all, clean hands. This is one thing I really like about Barry. Being clean and one touch is so important for the role he plays, particularly if you're a player who's not getting that much of the footy. So, I mean, 13 disposals as a forward is probably about right. That was in the, in the carnival this year as well. But when he gets the football, he is very impactful. So his impact per possession is quite high. He uses agility to get out of trouble pretty well. He's quite quick. So he's got that evasiveness, which is very handy. Scoreboard impact, finishing, general IQ, and how hard he works. These things really round him out as a footballer. There's also that consistency consistency of production as well. So in the first five games of this year in the Coates Talent League, he had four games where he kicked four goals. In those 14 games that he played, he kicked multiple goals in seven of them. As you can imagine, a pretty strong ground level player. But like I said, you know, like a couple of other prospects who are a similar height in this year's draft, he's actually quite good overhead. And like I said, a quite a high IQ player as well. So his spatial awareness, his decision making with the ball in hand, his ball use itself is quite good. Sometimes, you know, on the run, it can waver a little bit, but generally I would describe him as a good kick of the footy. And the fact that he's sided as well. I mean, I do think his left foot is better than his right, but the fact that he's not afraid to use his right foot means that he can be dangerous in more positions. You know, he doesn't have to wheel back onto his left to have a shot at goal, for instance. And defensive pressure as well for the role he plays is super important. So I can see him appealing to a number of clubs in this year's draft, and we will get into what his actual draft range is. So let's cover off some weaknesses or perhaps just reasons why he isn't necessarily going higher. Um, I'd say that perhaps he hasn't really proven himself as a genuine midfielder yet. We referenced that he did go into the midfield this year. I think there's no doubt his smaller frame makes it a little bit tricky for him. In particular, some of his tackles, I mean, the defensive pressure element is good, but perhaps with his small frame, I don't know if it's a technical issue or if it's just a strength issue. Sometimes he kind of struggles to bring players down, but you'd imagine with a bit more development, that could be rectified as well. And sometimes, you know, you, you, you sense that Berry probably impacts the game in bursts rather than consistently over four quarters, but that can be true sometimes of a smaller forward half player. So for me, I don't, I don't see genuine 
holding midfielder at the next level, but perhaps just a hard running high half forward that you can throw behind the ball. And with his ball use and decision making as a running defender could absolutely plug a hole there and certainly has the running capacity to play on the wing. So where did we spit him out in terms of draft ranking? So discussing his range, there seems to be pretty good uniformity around where different you know media outlets and experts are ranking Barry. So Toomey ranked him at 18th in the last Phantom Form game that he did. Fox Footy ranked him at 14. Uh, the age has him in the mock draft going at pick 17 to Fremantle and so does ESPN. So a pretty tight range there on Joe Berry. I would suggest that in terms of where the start of his range at this year's draft is, maybe West Coast first selection is the first time I could really see him being selected. Of course, that would depend on a number of variables. I don't think West Coast is on the lookout for a small forward, but if all their other targets are gone, it's potentially that pick. Richmond have the pick before that. It's hard to see them taking Berry with any of their first four selections. I could be wrong there. So then after that, you've got GWS, Fremantle, Port Adelaide. These clubs have all been meaningfully linked and have some degree of need for a pressure, hard running, small forward. I'd be very surprised if he gets past the Bulldogs at what could be pick 20 on the night. It's currently pick 17, but you'd imagine after bids, the Bulldogs will pick at pick 20. It's hard to imagine him getting past there because I think they're another team who could use a player. So with that all being said, probably 15 to 20 is his range and I feel a little uncomfortable picking a range that tight, but that seems to be you know fairly unanimous about where his range is at. So let me know in the comments, guys, what do you think of Joe Berry? I have accidentally called him Jared Berry three times and hopefully we'll be able to edit that out. So if I said Jared Berry at all during this video and didn't pick it up, please forgive me, but let me know what you think of him. I actually really like him as a prospect, not quite suitable for West Coast, but I wouldn't complain if we did take him with our first selection if other players are gone. So let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.